Good morning. Please stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. From you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O most merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods of your ancestors served beyond the river 
and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is a portion of Psalm 34. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows, arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. The word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard this, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Why does bread figure so prominently in our readings? Bread was central to the formation of early human societies and has a long history. And like any good teacher, Jesus used bread as a familiar object lesson and drew a comparison as well as a contrast. Forty years ago, when I was a missionary in southern Lebanon at the Voice of Hope radio station, our studios bordered a verdant farm field that was a part of the so-called Valley of the Springs. And I observed that workers would go out in the field and wrap up their lunch meals in a piece of flatbread, and inside would be vegetables or ground-up beans, maybe a little rice, and rarely, a piece of meat. And flatbread served the useful purpose of being a kind of edible Ziploc bag to carry your lunch in. In place of utensils, you could tear your bread into a square and make a scoop to pick up hummus or rice served out of a common bowl. In a communal meal, everyone literally broke bread together. Bread was sold on every corner, made daily in just about every home, and a part of every meal. In places where refrigeration was spotty or non-existent, bread has always been a perfect staple. It can keep all day, and nothing beats the smell of fresh-baked bread. Which all sounds very idyllic and peaceful, but the Voice of Hope was broadcasting in the middle of a war between the PLO to the north and the Israeli army to the south. As an announcer, counting down the hits took on a whole new meaning for me. My life was spared on at least one occasion by mere minutes, and I never walked past a parked car without wondering if it would explode. Even if you weren't the direct target, being in the wrong place at the right time was always a possibility. To make things even more complicated, this all took place against the backdrop of a civil war that had been going on since 1975 that would last 15 years and claim over 150,000 lives on all sides 
So no matter which direction we looked, there was a conflict. On October 23rd of 1983, suicide bombers struck the barracks housing the U.S. Marine contingent of a multinational peace force with a loss of 241 Americans killed and 128 wounded. Minutes later, the French multinational force was attacked in the same way with a loss of 58. I got the feeling foreigners were not always welcome, no matter what the intention was. Within six months of my return to the United States, the radio station was attacked, the on-duty announcer was killed, and the studio building left in ruins. Fortunately, the remote transmitters and towers were spared, and within a couple days, the radio station was back on the air. The voice of hope was not to be silenced. Fear causes people to coalesce around their tribes based on religious traditions and understandings to seek defensive positions, not only physically, but also mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. I sensed a longing for peace on all sides, but making peace requires a certain amount of trust and vulnerability. The same is true right here in our backyards and starting to come out in our politics. When folks predict civil war if their candidate does not win in November, it makes me cringe. Our country survived a civil war over deep questions over the direction of the Union, but the cost was high, and the remnants of those wounds remain to this day. When I went to Lebanon, I knew nothing about the civil war or other issues that have plagued the Middle East for thousands of years. I went there reciting that familiar saying, it is better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. But oh, how deep that darkness can be. Maybe it was better I did not know what I was getting into because I may never have gone. But I'm glad I did. There are times when you simply have to move out of your comfort zone and say yes to the invitation and that pull on your heart. We used to joke that some folks were carrying a holy book in one hand and a weapon in the other. Some days I was not sure which was which. Today, when I hear descriptions of religious nationalism in the U.S., all I can say is I've seen that before, and I hope as a country we don't go down that road and communal wisdom prevails. Lebanon was torn apart by internecine violence along religious, cultural, and political divides, though it was hard to separate out the cultural from the religious aspects, and even being neutral made us a subject of suspicion. I remember being asked one night in broken English over a tiny cup of strong Arabic coffee if I was with the CIA. I guess the idea that someone would come into a war zone voluntarily seemed suspect. I often wondered then, as now, what would incentivize folks to lower their defenses, close their holy books, and engage in dialogue with those whom they assumed to be sworn enemies, infidels, monstrous murders, and any number of descriptions, and let go of their tribal gods and their traditional fears of all outsiders. One suggestion is to start by holding each other's babies. As Father David reflected last Sunday, we need wisdom to navigate the world. Sadly, there are some not seeking wisdom, but revenge and control. This, of course, leads to a cycle of violence. How can we break that cycle? When Jesus says, I am the bread of life, and no one follows me, will ever go hungry or thirsty, that hunger and thirst must be seen in a spiritual context. And inherent in that statement is a promise to those who do hunger after the kingdom and its righteousness. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. As they followed Jesus toward the synagogue, some of the disciples began to murmur, his teaching is difficult, who can accept it? So Jesus said to them, does this offend you? So this group consulted among themselves and went off and found someone else to listen to. When Jesus stood before Pilate, awaiting his fate, Pilate remarked, 
What is truth? In the same way, the truth is often standing right in front of us and we don't recognize it or we won't accept it. So we tune into another voice, a radio station or news network that tells us what we want to hear. Communication experts call that confirmation bias. We seek out sources that reinforce what we already believe. As a result, truth is now something we vote on, and I wonder if we have lost the ability to hear the words of truth in life. If our ears and hearts have been opened, there is no other place to go. Peter got that right. He wasn't the smartest one in the group, but he loved Jesus. And even if he didn't understand everything being said, he wasn't going anywhere else. Jesus was not destined to be the political messiah people were looking for, someone to stick it to the Romans and restore King David's throne. Building a kingdom on human thoughts and effort leads to all kinds of wars and fighting on whatever level it comes down to. That's true in any place at any time. It's true within communities, churches, even families. Don't use Jesus as a way to win political arguments or score points. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Spiritual needs can never be satisfied with physical things. Father Richard Rohr describes the three Ps, power, possessions, prestige. The ego, or false self as he describes it, never feels secure enough, satisfied enough, or worthy enough. The flesh kills, but the spirit gives life. There are followers of Jesus, and then there are some who really take in Jesus' teachings and literally swallow them up. It is true for our bodies as well as our souls. Our diet is not only what we eat. It's what you watch on TV, what you listen to on the radio, what you read, who you hang around with. And the litmus test is always what comes out of our mouths. It is easy to say I am a Christian, but Jesus said even the rocks can cry out and say that. Again, too often we promote a religion about Jesus and we fail to live out the teachings of Jesus. The Reverend Chelsea Harmon observes that there are a number of pieces to today's gospel reading and they all hinge on what people can accept as reality. That there is a nourishment we need from God that only comes through accepting belief. That Jesus is the eternal bread of life that provides and sustains. That the Spirit draws in and teaches all who are able to accept these truths. That we need to literally integrate the very body and blood of Christ into ourselves. That if we come to him, we will never be hungry or thirsty again. That the Spirit of God is life and our human flesh and ability will get us nowhere. Can we accept that the work has been done for us and there's nothing we can do? Can we accept that what we have accomplished for ourselves doesn't amount to much? Can we accept that the very ideas, systems, and rituals that we have built our lives upon need to be uprooted and transformed? And can we accept God's reality and Jesus' spirit-filled words of life Jesus reminds us about the way that the Father works, drawing in and teaching people, enabling them to accept the true but seemingly hidden reality. No one comes and sticks around unless God is behind it. Jesus calls us to take a risk, to sign on the dotted line and do as he does, teach as he teaches, Proclaim the reality he proclaims to risk ourselves with him. The disciples who stuck around Jesus were not perfect followers, and neither are we. But that's okay. Perhaps the comfort is that the dinner invitation to feast on Christ is never rescinded, and the Father grants our return even when we walk away. This morning, as you come up for communion, Open yourself up and say, yes. Put your name on the dotted line. Let the bread and wine be not just signs, but take in the reality of God's kingdom and God's way of doing things. 
Let the words of Jesus become our words in God's way, our way. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. For those who lead and guide the Church of Christ. For loving care, we pray to you, O Lord. Bless all schools that they may be lively centers for learning, discovery, and wisdom. Grant that those who teach and those who learn find you to be the two source of all truth. For those who guide the nations of the earth. That wisdom reign, we pray to you, O Lord. For those who seek and serve the common good. That justice reign, we pray to you, O Lord for neighbors' needs, for shelter from the storm. For homes of peace, we pray to you, O Lord. Remembering especially Bill, Rita, Sarah's family, Carol, John, Tiffany, Father David, Marilyn, Elaine B., Sylvia, and Thelma. For those oppressed, for those who live in fear. Amen. For all the sick, the dying, and the dead. We have in grace, we pray to you, O Lord. That we may live in peace from day to day. That wars will cease, we pray to you, O Lord. That we may stay faithful, open to your word. Your kingdom come. We pray to you, O Lord. That we might find grace and mercy from our sins. For reconciliation with you and each other, we pray to you, O Lord. For all the dreams held deep within our hearts. For all our needs, we pray to you, O Lord. Entrusting all we are into your hands. We call your name and pray to you, O Lord. Amen. Are there birthdays or anniversaries to be celebrated today? Okay. How many years? Seven. Seven years. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that in your love you have brought together Shane and Christopher, that you have shown your light 
within their hearts, made them one, and created a light for the world. We ask you to help them remember these seven years and more, to help them appreciate the blessings that have been part of their lives by being together. We ask you to bless them as they look forward to many more years and the blessings that will come, and help us to see through that light your love working in the world. And the blessing, mercy, and peace of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another in the name of the Lord. Please be seated. Sarah, come up here. After spending the summer with us and learning how to serve and being part of the worship and everything, Sarah's off, back off to college this week, Carthage and Waukesha. And Carol, yeah. Carol. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. I was almost there. Okay. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that in your servant, Sarah, you have blessed us with someone who loves her church, loves to serve not only the church, but others, serve the world, an inner vocation that she looks forward to filling, serving animals and creation. We ask you to bless her in this coming school year, to fill her with wisdom and knowledge to allow her to fulfill those dreams that you have for her and that she has found in you. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Very Thank good. You. You're welcome. <laughs> Announcements. I suppose the first thing I should tell you, Marilyn is doing well. Got home on Friday. The food started shortly after that. <laughs> Thank you, we are eating well. By the time I have my surgery, I'll probably have 15 pounds on me. <laughs> but it's very much appreciated, so thank you all. Um, uh, Marilyn's daughter, Allison, has been with us since Wednesday night. And she'll go home today, so 
Um, all things are going well, so thank you for your prayers. Other announcements? Wow. That's it? Okay. Pardon? Okay. Um, we are going to start a guild. We, we, we have heard many good things about moving over from paper cups to the glass glasses. Um, and what we'd like to do is start a small guild of people who uh, will take turns cleaning and washing out the glasses for use from week to week. So if you could take part in that, uh, we'd very much appreciate that. Uh, just sign up with Patricia. Well, maybe the first thing we need to talk about is you not being here. <laughs> no, we don't shame anybody here. Uh, no guilt in, at St. John's. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
All praise and thanks are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things, you laid the foundations of the world and it enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and the ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
This is a new one we've never done before, so I'm going to sing it through once, and then you're going to sing it with me the second time, okay? Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing, mercy, and peace of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. <laughs>